Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting Vobie One-Eyed Kenobi Shobi with me, Richard Vobes. Uh, it's very nice of you to join us. We're live on the 8th of May 2020. Apparently it's VE Day, which of course means Vobes Entertains Day. Uh, I don't know, other people have other reasons for calling it different things. I, I don't know what they're talking about. With me is the very lovely, the one and only, the uh, most glamorous, lovely Julia. Hello to you, lovely Julia. Oh, yes, I've got to put headphones on to talk to lovely Julia. She refuses to talk to me unless I've got the headphones on. Hello, Julia, how are you? Are you muted? Because all of a sudden I can't hear you. I was muted. I'm not now, though. Oh, there but... we are. I suddenly was going, uh-oh, we've just sorted it out. Now there's an issue. Anyway, <laughs> never mind all that. I can hear you. How, right. the, how the devil are you, lovely Julia? Oh, I'm OK, thank you. How are you? Yes. There's devil. How the devil are you? Oh, the devil in me is devilish. I've got my swishing tail and my little horns all set to the antennae of fun. Gla uh, gla fab. Fab. And you said Glastonbury, because I read Glastonbury, great. God, Jesus. <laughs> Teasing. Gets it. And brain. Can you engage the brain? Engla en engage the brain cell. That's no, it. it's not working. Uh, could you go chase uh, jo Jojo, because maybe he's got it. You've been with the baby all day. It's perfectly fine. I have. Baby brain. I have no excuse for my cock-ups. Anyway, uh, I gather there's people outside in the Vobosphere. Could you uh, say a few hello to a few of them? Yes, we have Ramadu 2, Days of Yore, Barry Stevens, Andy Dalgleish, Glastonbury Gabriel, Mike Stevens, Mandy of Merrimack, Ernie, Nigel Sadler, Ron Langley, scrolling up, River Reed Roblox. Who's, who's, Mark who's scrolling Donald up? Who's, I've not seen scrolling up. He, he's a new one, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I have to scroll up. Oh, I see. I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, and we have Emerald the Cat. Ah, Emerald the Cat. Hello, Emerald the Cat. Hope you're well. <laughs> Meow. Meow. <laughs> Fantastic. So good. we've got a good bunch of people in at the moment. Thank you very people. much. Um, by the way, the list, but yeah, there's loads more. Lovely to see Rami Boo too. How is Rami Boo? I did email her and I've messaged her in comments, but um, I don't think I've seen a reply. But she vanished, didn't she? We were all getting worried. Yeah, we were. We were very worried for her. I was missing you, Rami Boo, Lisa. But uh, she's she's here now. All is well with the world again. Fantastic. Oh, that's all right then. Superb. And uh, I think uh, Glastonbury says he likes Emerald. <laughs> I rather like her too. She's my favourite. Uh, not that I should have a favourite, but she's my f she's my familiar if I were to have one. A f oh, very familiar. <laughs> and out of your three cat, four cats, haven't you? You've got, you've got four. four now because you've got a boy cat as well. Yeah, I've got the three related girls and then I've got the male um, kitten that we got in December. Yeah, which is uh, technically Elijah's kitten. Yes. Cat. Technically Elijah's now. cat. Yes. But, of course, uh, you're the one that feeds him. Yep, I'm the one that feeds him, cleans his litter tray and um, cleans his bum if, he, if it needs be. <laughs> well, let's uh, not worry too much about that. Do you? Um, no, really. I know that at one point you were thinking about taking him for a walk in a collar. Yes, well, not a collar, a, a harness. Oh, a harness, <laughs> beg your pardon. Sorry, terminolo yeah. Ro terminology wrong. Hold, hold on one minute. <laughs> Get it right, boobs. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. In a harness. And, and the question is, though, have you? Um, well, he he has. I have begun the harness and leash training with him, but um, it's kind of gone by the wayside with the lockdown. Um, yeah. Oh yes, of course. Mainly because um, we get to supervise him in the garden usually. Because you did read the uh, lockdown uh, governmental guidelines that said you mustn't, uh, by any account, take a cat out on the streets when you do your daily exercise, because uh, obviously a cat is going to pass on the cat vid um, mm. nineteen. Well, funny enough, I don't tend to walk him outside of the premises anyway. Oh, um, right. It's so, just leash training for future... Uh, yeah, future out, outside the eat. premises makes it sound like oh. it's a factory. <laughs> or a cat tree, I should say. A cat, cat tree. <laughs> um, so, so that's all good. Um, Judith is uh, very complimentary to you. She says she's loving your hair, Julia. Thank you. I'm enjoying having my flowers back in my hair again. Can I just say to uh, Ed Loud, if he's out there, loving your hair too. Loving your hair. <laughs> after he shaved it all off. Or uh, his lack thereof. Uh, or his lack thereof. Or now, of course, he can, he can do like me. First thing in the morning, have a good old buff up. Oh, there's nothing more fun than having a good buff Buffing up. up. <laughs> have a good buff up first thing in the morning. <laughs> you get your little, um, what is it, the chamois. Get your chamois out. 
do a shimmy with your chamois in the bathroom and buff it all up. Get, you know, a bit of Brasso on there and um, buff it up. It's lovely. You know, you joke about using a chamois on, on, on your head, but mm. there are a breed of um, naked cats, as in no fur, bold cats, that, that you have to actually chamois because of all the, um, the, the oil that comes out of their skin that would be going onto the fur. Oh. It's quite interesting. I think. So do you think all cats must must excrete this oil? But but ordinarily, as you say, it goes into the fur. So yeah, it's, yeah. It usually keeps the fur healthy and clean. Yeah. And then they dust bathe to get rid of excess. But uh, um, obviously, a sphinx cat, i.e., of the bold breed, they can't they can't do that. No. So, a chamois, it is. A chamois. <laughs> a chamois. Is a sphinx cat named after the sphinx in Egypt? Then is that where that? I think so. Yep. Good gracious. Uh, there are, did you know that according to Edgar Case, was it Edgar Case? I think it was Edgar Case. Uh, under the underneath the Sphinx, which I don't think they've actually uh, excavated, is um, a hoard of treasure. I didn't know that, but Edgar Case was uh, around in the nineteen. I think he was in the nineteen forties or something, or thirties or forties. He was a bit of a psychic nut. Um, mm. And I read when I was in my teens and into all, all this sort of psychic nonsense. You know, you go through these phases. And um, apparently he 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 foresaw that something to do with rabbits could cure cancer. And apparently that's a thing. I had no idea. I don't know quite what it is now, but it's something like in the bone marrow of a, a rabbit. There's something that actually can help cure cancer. I, I'm, whether it the, wouldn't actually surprise me. Whether but... the doctors use it or not. But anyway, he foresaw that before it happened. Ron Langley is asking if my purple hair is gone. Well, it's growing out um, and there's some purple in it still. I've got some colour now to put in it, so but I'm not going to bleach it yet. So there will be some purple back. And that's what you have to do, isn't it? You bleach it first and then yeah. put the purple in. I bleach my natural colour out and yeah. to, to make the blank canvas and then I can paint my uh, colour on. Um Glastonbury uh, says he was Ed Case. He was, he was an, an Ed, Ed Case. He was an Ed Case. <laughs> Edgar Case. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they mix their toesies. They certainly do. You don't want to overdo it. Uh, rabbits are overrated. Are they? As long oh, as... Mystic Hare would say that. Oh, yes, of course. Mystic Hare would say that. Is she the hare? Yes. Are you she or a he? I don't know. I don't know if I ever worked that one out. No, we don't. Some people are sexless, you know. Yes, that's perfectly fine. I'm down with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's uh, VE Day, of course, Vobes Entertains. And uh, in this case, of <laughs> course, it's uh, they, they also have uh, VJ Day, which is a different day. Of course, people associate that with Japan, but uh, that's naturally Vobes and Julia Day. Um, I'm not quite sure when VJ Day is actually coming about, but whenever it is, I'm sure we'll do a show together, if that's all right with your good self. OK. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, very much hoping that uh, Boris, Boris the uh, Prime Minister Boris, not that I think I can know and name any other Boris other than Mr Karloff. No, um, me neither. Uh, is, uh, I'm hoping that, that there may be some cracks in this lockdown that uh, it may be that um, we will turn into um, Harry Houdini and start to uh, wrestle about in the bag, you know, the chained bag before it's immersed into the big tank of water <laughs> and escape at the last minute. So I'm, I'm rather hoping that we can get to go and meet up in the physical again. Yes, that would be great, wouldn't it? I'm really missing the walks, like... That, so ex much exactly uh, and of course doing the shows without all this weird technology stuff yeah, yeah. it's kind of nice being in the comfort of my own home but you know I miss oh, thanks. Being able to... yeah no thanks very much yeah no thanks <laughs> hey, what hey, are you exactly finished. saying but I miss being able to leave these four walls and oh, yeah. go and uh, witness your four walls <laughs> my cluttered and walls the cluttered and your walls... lovely Essie oh yes bless you. the Essie I'm bless letting the yeah. Essie go out tonight Oh, really? My art's not in it. <laughs> Luckily, it's uh, still in the chest where it's keeping, that's, keeping warm. That's very fortunate. Um, Charles has just asked me a question. Where's yeah. your patch? You Where's know, my the, patch? Um... Oh, my patch is, is yeah. just up here. I don't know if you can see. My patch here. I have yet to find strong enough uh, needle and thread to uh -huh. sew it on anything because it's so thick. But it's not even out of the out of the packet. But I will show the audience. 
that little memory. Single audience. The single audience. Yes, this is something that uh, I don't know whether they're ready available. Is uh, Chaz selling them? Yep, they are being sold from Secure and wait. Command, secure, command secure control. and somebody or other. They're, they're, secure command control. They're a bunch of lawyers, aren't they? Secure command and control. Um, like Taylor uh, Johnson and Taylor. No, they're a, a, a basically a training company. They also sell. Um, I was joking. I was joking. Guns. Yeah, I know you were. Anyway, this is a patch. Um, it's not an eye patch, although of course I could use it as an eye patch. It's a bit big for me, and uh, this is a patch that goes on your kit bags, and. Um, or on your uh, uniform, if you're or on in your, the your on your forces. uniform, that sort of thing. And so this one on it says, "The 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, um, awarded to Richard Vobes for gallantry." It says here, in the uh, in the hour of duty, here's two fingers up to you, Vobes. We wish you'd stop doing your show every single bloody day. <laughs> we have missed Master Chef. And come dancing and all the other programs because we've been addicted to the show. That's that's uh, the God's honest lie. But it's got a, ch a church. I need to call him Chelsea then. <laughs> it's got church, <laughs> church hall, church hill, not church hall. It's got the church hall on it. Oh, um, how much are they? If anybody wanted to buy one, uh, eight pounds, I believe. And it's a charity patch. Yeah, and it's a charity patch. How much goes to charity? Uh, Six pounds out of the eight pounds goes to charity. Which charity was it? Scotty's Little Soldiers. Scotty's Little Soldiers. And the Scotty's Little Soldiers, they are made up of little dogs, apparently. <laughs> Scotty dogs. And they look great in their so, little kilts. Okay. The I Scotty. knew you'd like one. Yes. So there we are, eight quid. If you want any of them, send me an email, richard at vobes.com. We'll uh, forward them on to, um, or, or go to the Secure Command and Controls website by patching in by patching in secure ah. command and control and make sure it's the one at Shoreham. And you um, 48, 48 Nicholson's Wharf. Yeah, or, or you can do it via Facebook. Oh, um, yeah, look on, look on Facebook. Forgot about that. The Book of Faces. There we go. So uh, I will at some point uh, find some industrial needles to actually sew it on. That's the, uh, that's the only thing is when you're sewing it on because it's, it, they're, you know, they're meant to last a lifetime. I mean, they will last a lifetime. There's no meant, meant, meant to. That implied that they are supposed to, but wouldn't. <laughs> if you see what I mean. Now, talking of VE Day, I want to show everybody a picachar. Hold on one second. Oh, is that the Sorry ice cream that. van? Yep. I didn't miss that. Gosh. Uh, a 99, please. Could you get me a 99? Uh, right. I just uh, I just want to show everybody a... a, a no, no, I don't want a picture of uh, Dave Ford. Thank you. Here, oh, I've lost the picture. Here we go. Now, this is Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West, celebrating VE Day outside his house, complete with the, um, the, the Union flag. And it looks like he's got a gramophone record. It's in his RAF blues. And he's got the RAF uh, round all there with the uh, Union flag. And he looks like he's drinking wine and having cups of tea in his front garden, which does look like a 1940s... Um, terraced house actually and not only that but also we do have some video which i'm sure you're all going to want to watch here is a little bit of video of a fly past now this is ernie in the cockpit of a spitfire ladies and gentlemen flying past his own house he's obviously put it into low gear as he did this and here it goes flying past his own house, and there it is. Look at that. The only one on the street, by the looks of things, who has been celebrating. But absolutely brilliant. Look at that. And uh, fortunately, he managed to land the Spitfire before it crashed into um, the house at the end of the street. So well done, Ernie. He gets a big clap. I see you're filling your face up there, lovely Julia. You, you muted yourself again, haven't you? Dang, I was trying to fit it in during the video, and yes, I had muted myself. Ah, <laughs> uh, so there we go. I hope that was all right. Uh, solicitors, says Andy Dalgleish, talking <laughs> of um, um, solicitors. Uh, I have a professional dealings with Wright, Hassel and Rupert Bear. <laughs> <laughs> 
Are they? Are, and they're real, are they? They can't be. Uh, Rick Gordon, hello to you from the hills of Cambridge. From the flats, isn't it? The flats of Cambridge. The rise, the gentle rise of Cambridgeshire. Thank you, Rick, by the way, for your video the other day. Uh, Linda Kane out there says, too soon to change anything yet, what with more than six th 600 dying every day. Um, thank you very much, Linda. <laughs> Bringing it down on VE Day. <laughs> Any more good comments out there before we go to a video, Julia? Marion Sussex says, I'm sunburnt following VE Day street party. Then I went on a bike ride from home to Eastbourne and back and saw several other street parties. Oh, right. I'm interested to know how these street parties were laid out. Where is everybody just sitting in their front garden shouting to each other over the fence? Going, Pretty much. Would you like a nice m muffin, John? What? What? Or a tea cake? What? What? Uh, what a tea cake? Yes, I've got a tea. I'll throw it at you. <laughs> Cup of tea? I'll throw it at you. You just reminded me. Um, I was tempted to uh, set up a bucket of disinfectant so that my my son could play ball with the neighbour's kid over the fence. So if they each had a, a bucket of disinfectant, dunk, whoosh, dunk, whoosh. Yeah, anyway, I yeah. think I said that before, actually. No, but I think that's a brilliant idea. It's certainly... Um... <laughs> wear your fingers out to the bone, wouldn't you, with that one? Yeah, they might get a bit covered in the disinfectant, but whatever, it keeps them entertained, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And then at the end of the day, you put the child in the bucket of disinfectant or sulfuric acid, like the acid bath murderer did, and that's oh, one less you. to feed. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, Mr Great Plum says no V Day celebrations in his road. Oh. I'm sorry about that. Not but, many on my road either, to be honest. No, to be honest, I don't think anybody did anything on in my road. Um, people did walk down and drive their cars and things, but uh, I was rather hoping to see a tank go past or something. Apparently, there was a Spitfire that flew across. Did you hear the Spitfire, Julia? Yes, I did hear it. Didn't actually get out to see it in time. But... Oh, I didn't. Um, I, and I didn't realise that, that we were having a moment of silence. thought it was a moment of Murphy. Um, <laughs> Uh, because I was at that moment, I was editing away and all I heard was myself burbling back at me for tomorrow's video. But hey-ho. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to work out the semantics of that. Because technically you were talking, but you weren't actually talking live. No, so. I was listening to the ambient sounds of myself. Of your own dulcet tones. Yes, that's it, those dull tones. Um <laughs> Six, 600 deaths, says we're in Sussex now, is irrelevant to the current infection situation, though, as those people would mostly have been infected late March. Yeah. So can you translate that into uh, words I understand, Julia? Basically, um, the infection rate is, um, is, is lower than that because we're still seeing the deaths from the infection rate of four, five weeks ago. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so that's a good thing then. Yeah. Less well, it's people. not the thing that we're still having lots of deaths, but... Well, of course, but fewer people. Oh, that's that's good. I've, I haven't switched the radio on much today um, because they kept talking about this um, VE Day thing and I kept thinking it was the wrong way round. But anyway, enough of my thoughts. Um, shall we go to the video box? Yes, let's see what's in the video box today. And then we will open up the telephone line. Is that Good all right? Idea. Can you go and connect the wires to the telegraph poles? As uh, Eric is just going to nip out and connect them. Uh, going into the video box tonight. Oh, I've <laughs> there we are. Look, we're having another flyby. We might as well get to two for the price of one. It's Ernie's house yet again. Um, it's two. two for the price of one. And, and there he is. This is where he came to a terrible skidding crash just before those houses at the end. But we can't show you that because... Um, it will upset the children. So um, we have uh, the lovely Wendy is out. Now, in this episode, we actually get to see the lovely Wendy cavorting around uh, her woodland uh, graveyard. And what's interesting is she's going to demonstrate a tree. And you don't normally see these trees isolated on. The, well, sometimes you do see them isolated on, but not in a churchyard. I thought it was great. And uh, it's quite big for what it is. You'll see what I mean. Oh, and the only other thing I should say is uh, Wendy's very, very quiet. So you might have to turn your volume up. I couldn't make it any louder, I'm afraid. So here we are, Wendy Lowry. And the filming is done by good old Hubby, who we do get to hear right at the end 
when he says those immortal words, how do you turn this off? Hello, Richard. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's OK. Right, I'm back in my local churchyard. I've been here before. But today I've come for something specific. I've come to show you this lovely portal. I just pull this down and you can get a close look at this beautiful blossom here. Isn't that gorgeous? And there's some more. If we just pan over there, there's some more there. And there's more there. And if we keep panning, there's more over there. And there's even more here. So we've done a complete circle and it's just full of hawthorn. So I hope you enjoy seeing that. It's really beautiful. Beautiful day today, very hot. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. So thank you for watching everyone. Bye. How do you turn? I don't need them on for the moment. How do you turn? How do you turn it off? It's all good fun. Oh, what did uh, what did you make of that uh, lovely Julia? Unmute yourself. Not having a good time today. Not having good luck. I thought that was really lovely. I loved all those blossoms. I have to admit, Leslie Couch said lovely blossoms on the trees, and I am. Um, um, I think someone else said lovely blossom as well. I thought they said something not blossom. Oh, lovely bottom. Boss, uh, bosom. I thought it was bosom. Oh, bosoms. <laughs> oh, yes, sorry. I thought you said lovely bottoms. Um, I mean, lovely bosom too, but I'm that was not I'm, the point. <laughs> I'm sure the compliment goes on both ups and downs. Um, <laughs> but yes, what, lovely to see a hawthorn tree. You know, on its own, they can get quite, quite big and they do look splendid with that um, blossom. Uh, as opposed to bosoms on it. It's uh, the wrong season for the bosoms on trees at the moment. The bosoms come to apple trees, little round, little weighty bosoms. Um, Should we move swiftly on from that now? <laughs> yes, yes, because that does get the pip after a while. Uh, so there we go. So uh, let's open up the uh, telephone line. Um, for, and for those of you that don't know what the telephone number is, it's on the screen now. 0793 4746 is the number. O oh, seven, uh, whatever it is, something, 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 something. It's now on the number. And the reason I'm saying that is I'm just trying to find where the number is on the screen. There it is. I just want to copy that so I can put it over the lovely Julia and I by doing paste on there. So there we are. Some people know what the number is. You can give us a tinkle. Oh seven nine three four seven four six seven nine zero. We would love to hear from you. What if you tell us about your VE... Uh, celebrations tonight or um, tell us about uh, perhaps a member of your family who fought in the Second World War or tell us what uh, what colour your socks are. We don't really care what you tell us, but tell us something and th that will keep us going. By the way, uh, we're going to next week, the lovely uh, Julia and I have been talking about uh, doing some form of game where you guys become the contestants. And so, you know, you kind of ring in. Um, there's no kind of. You actually do. You ring in. That's kind of a big part of the game. Yeah, and uh, it's a bit like what's in the box, and we may, you know, what is, um, what's, uh, what's on my mind. <laughs> I don't. We haven't thought of the actual game, but the what's game is you get, head? yeah, it, that, or or uh, vegetable minerals and things, and you ring up, and then we play the game, and you play along at home as well, and there's a cash prize. Oh, no, there isn't. Sorry, there's no cash prize. <laughs> I was nodding then, what? Yeah, there's a, there's a cash prize. Well, so um, that that's, you know, because uh, we do enjoy the conversations on the phone. I appreciate that unless there's some context or reason to ring up, then why would you ring? It's like, you know, us begging you, begging you, begging you. You are now picking up the phone. You are now dialing the number. You will ring the vogue. You will do it and you will do it now. 
Let's just see how many people are susceptible to that. Edgar Case has told me. He predicted you will pick up the phone and talk to the lovely Julia. Ask the lovely Julia questions about what she's done for the last seven weeks in lockdown. Um, what can you do with a little baby? You've had seven weeks of very much close contact with you. I mean, I know you would anyway with Joseph, but uh, I haven't distracted you by pulling you out and saying, come on, we've got to go and make these videos. And, yeah, um, <clears throat> he's he's not been able to you know see lots of woodlands and things like that. I mean, he loves looking up and watching the branches and, and the leaves, you know, moving and stuff. I know that the, the leaves are only quite recent in the last couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, he's really missed that. Mm, and it was very yeah. difficult to start with, but but the hardest one is the nine year old trying to keep him entertained, trying to get him to do his schoolwork and things like that. Yeah, that must be. Um, I mean, it's it's great with them. Um, Watching what Barry does with Faden, I think it's been so great that he and Faden have just gone out and made these videos, and they've just gone to lots of different places. I forget how Faden is eight. How old is Elijah? Nine. 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 So uh, yeah, no, I imagine that um, you know some time because uh, uh, you know time with his with the parents probably. <laughs> well, you know, it's double edged sword, isn't it? You... <laughs> Some some kids like it. Some kids probably don't like it. Depends yeah. on wh where you are and what you do, I suppose. I mean, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I have personally found that this lockdown, it, obviously, it's had a lot of disadvantages, but there have been some advantages as well. I mean, you know, we've been kind of forced to try and function better as a family because, mm. you know, I'm not a, a, a perfect family, as you may have believed. Well, you're just one person. You're a key element of the family. You can't be the well, perfect family if it's just down to you. It's got to be down to everybody, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Team, team effort and everything. Team effort. We're definitely much more, um, much more work. Well, working much more together now, which is, is it's better, much better. Better it that way round than the other way, which I do fear that a number of families will have found this so intolerable. Yeah. Um, and that you know, you know, well, we know that kids have been ringing up Childline. Um, more and the uh, women have been ringing up um, the, the, yeah. the whatever it is the, line whatever it is yeah the husband's beating me up line and uh, I'm sure there's been a few men who've also rung up the my wife's been uh, abusing me a bit probably not as many but uh, but that does happen and uh, you, we mustn't laugh at it because uh, some some women can be who's laughing no, I'm not laughing I'm oh, not hey. laughing at all good uh, what are the comments? Oh, no. What are the comments saying, lovely Julia? Barry Stevens says Faden moans sometimes about going out, but once he's out, he loves it. Oh well, that's kids, isn't it? I mean, I used to take mine up on the downs to Sisbury Ring. They never wanted to go. Never wanted to go. Oh, do we have to? Do we have to? You get them up there. They loved it. Then when we said time to go back now, oh, do we have to? Do we have to? It's, I think kids just don't like the transition from one thing to another. But when mm. they're doing the other, they love it. Yeah, I guess it's the the, the um, act of change, you know. I mean, everyone struggles with change to a certain degree. Mm. Um, but getting yeah. kids to change anyway is a bit, you know, you need to change yeah. your underpants, young man. Oh, do I have to? Do I have to? Yes, you've worn those for six weeks. Thankfully, I don't have that fight with my kid. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Any more comments? Yes, um... Ed Loud says, wow, don't know what I did different this time, but they were the best sourdough pancakes I've ever had. Mmm. Sourdough pancakes? Yeah. He was making them for his brother, I, I saw in an earlier comment. Right, oh, OK. So you make the same what same sort of dough as you would make for sourdough bread, only I guess you make it thinner so it will go into a pan, like a pancake, and it tastes differently, I suppose. I guess so. What I would like, I don't know if Mark, uh, Mark is, uh, yes, Mark Donnie McLeod is there. I want to ask, um, I want to ask him if he knows how you make, what recipe you need to do and what do you need to do to make crumpets? Oh, that's a good idea. Or as my mother good. used to call them, pike clicks. <laughs> pike. Well, Ed Loud says spot on, thinner batter dough and it makes a pancake. All oh, right, cool. There we are. You see, we've got a brain between the two of us. Share it, <laughs> sharing it tonight. So, yeah, I'd love to know how to make because I do like, I mean, they're so cheap as the, I was going to say they're cheap as chips, but actually I think they're cheaper than chips. Um, yeah. I do like, um, what did I call them? 
not muffins. I just said the word crumpets. <laughs> crumpets. I love love those crumpets with your favourite, Julia. Your f absolute favourite. Nice dollop of butter and a bit of marmite. You can't go wrong. So lovely. You said the M word. <laughs> yes, that's right. Muffins. <laughs> Oh, no, Marmite. Sorry, Marmite. Yes, Marmite. Mm. Uh, Alex Braid says, sorry, I'm late. Just woke up. What do you mean just woke up? You've been out celebrating. Oh, yes, he's had his own, his Vogue entertains party. It's very nice mm -hmm. that people have been uh, celebrating my entertainment thing. <laughs> he says, claiming a little bit of uh, something there. Ed Loud said he made uh, sourdough crumpets as well, similar to the pancakes. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Ed Loud. Well, it was Ed Loud who did the one in the first place. That, no, it was pancakes he made. Oh, but, I see. I thought that's what you just said. He, yeah, and he's, he made crumpets as well. Oh, he made crumpets. What is, uh, so how do you make crumpets then? Is it the same thing? Same same batter? Same recipe? So you just... Because they've all got those little holes drilled in them at the top. Yeah, I'm guessing they're air pockets. Um, Barbara Charles says, recipes are on the internet. Search crumpets. Oh, yes. Well, of course, I know that the, uh, there is the big internet to be searched. Um, i just seen a couple of things. Rami Boo, nice to see that you're out there. She says, this Sunday is our, in USA, Mother's Day. Going to seem very strange not taking mum out for dinner this year. Uh, did buy her a big hanging basket yesterday, which she sat in and enjoyed. Used it as a nice swing. Blimey. And uh, then she goes on to say, I, what I could do is some sourdough pancakes followed by some sourdough crumpets. Mum will love all of that. Give her a wave. There we are. Some of that may have been made up. <laughs> not quite sure. And Robin Marshall oh, really? says that my kids, when we lived in Sompting, used to make their own way up to the Downs, but it was different. It was different time today. That's true. Um, yeah, trying to, you know, you used to be able to let the kids go out. For, I mean, my when I was a kid, you know, you just went. And my mum never knew where we were. Mind you, she was an alcoholic and she was rather nasty, but so that's was the reason we went out. But, uh, you know. Uh, Mike Stevens says, I think pikelets are thinner than crumpets, but thicker than pancakes. Gosh, I wonder if there is a uh, a crumpet measure, a thickness measurement, so that you can gauge whether you've accidentally made a pancake of pikelets or a crumpet. <laughs> because, you know, you wouldn't want to get the label wrong at the local WI. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do that now, would you? Absolutely not. Well, listen, nobody's nobody's giving us a call, so I think what we'll do is we'll um, we'll lose the phone number for the moment. I have to do this a bit manually because we're in a different control zone here. Um, and uh, shall we have another video? Let's have another video. Now, we've got another video here, just going into uh, the video box. Oh, hang on, that's... Uh, hang on a minute, I can't get... How do I get rid of you? Sorry, Wendy. I... Oh, we've got, a, we've got a phone call. Beg your pardon. Sorry, it's all going a bit pear shape here as ever. We have a phone call. Let's find out who's calling in on the vote. Hello. 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 Is that Mark? Hello, what? Is, is that... it Reed? Is it the... Is it, is it the crowd. Ah, it is I. Aye. Ah, how is it up north? Have you had VE problems? No, actually. Um, uh, I've already been out once this morning. Oh, Let's aye. go and get some bits. Um, I've, I've got a phone today. Oh, so have I've you? I've been trying to work out how you <laughs> blooming thing. Um, how did you ring us before, then? Was it oh, you, a tin can oh, and a bit of string? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Oh. I used my old phone. So, oh, uh, I've got a new one now. I can't hear Julia. There you. you can, um, Julia, are you saying anything? She's not saying anything. No, I wasn't speaking. That's Wendy. Can Can you hear me, Mark? I can now. Yeah. Hey. She's <laughs> that thing when she opens her mouth. That's how the technology we've managed to get the technology. It all works. For yeah. the, it all works. Eventually, it gets there. Yeah. She, she just has to say say words. I'm just being a bit quiet. Right. That's all. Yeah. That's all right. She was doing um, yeah, pie clips and crumpets. I've got to be honest about this, right? I haven't made them since I was about like 20 or something, probably younger than that. Oh, my God, that's um, going back to the dark ages, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is, lad, yeah. Oh, Don't worry. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what it is, you see, what it what is. used to do was we'd press a button on a machine oh. <laughs> and the machine drops the, the, the dough onto a, a conveyor belt then it goes for a cooker. 
and they come out the other side cooked, you see. So what makes so, those little holes in the top? It's um, aeration thing. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> How oh. you? It's a bloody aeration thing. You don't know nothing, do you, over there? <laughs> Sorry about that. It's an area. What the hell is an area? I mean, obviously... So is it something that goes in and just forces air through it, like um, like a jet engine? Well, it's, while, while it's cooking, yeah, and yeah, it moves along as a little thing, right, and it's a little cup holder thingy. Yeah. Down comes this thing, and and like it's like as if it's got lots of little needles on it, goes oh. and, and makes like the little holes in it, and then off it goes. You see? Yeah. Oh, I see. So that what that does is actually produce the holes in the batter. In the in the in the uh, dough, by pu- uh, by so pushing, well. by and it goes through a cooking machine and it gets cooked. See, it ah. comes up to the side. So making them yourself. Go down ramp in tip packet. In tip packet. So making <laughs> them yourself ain't so easy, then, is it? No, I haven't done it for years, to be honest. Because I suppose if you made it yourself, you'd make up the dough. Uh, then in order to aerate it, you, you wouldn't necessarily have to have it on a conveyor belt, but I suppose you could nip down to your local quarry where they have com- long conveyor belts, shove it on there and have a straw and go... <laughs> 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 uh, you can't see what I'm doing, but uh, you can imagine that no. <laughs> I am piercing yeah, it yeah. <laughs> several times in order to Oh, get... right, OK. Oh, yeah. Ed Loud says... The, uh... Yeah, go on, Julia. Ed Loud says the holes are from carbon dioxide released from the... E- from the yeast and the acid slash alkaline reacting from the bicarb of soda slash baking powder in a traditional crumpet. Very easy to do. Very, very, very easy, apparently. There you go. There you go. See, Ed knows. <laughs> Ed knows. Uh, well, it seems to be two different ways of doing it because I think your way with those, because they are the same. Those little holes that you get on the top seem to be very similar pattern, you know, of the manufacturer. Uniform. Yeah, uniform. Uh, yeah. yeah, uniform. There we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, you see, I work when I when I work in thing in um, thing factory. Aye. In factory. Yeah. In bakery. Aye. Everything's done by machine. Yeah. So it's but just push a button and you can call yourself a baker. Aye. I'm a baker. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look at that. You see that finger there? Well, I did actually start off as a proper baker, you know, making, rolling things by hand, mixing it all, oh, that business, oh, the, the, the real thing. Either but right. as I got older, you see, yeah. I'll learn the technology. Technology. Let it do the work. Technology, and eh? Could you imagine <laughs> trying to make uh, up to 120, 160,000 rolls a day by yeah. hand? The thought of it is very daunting. 160,000. I mean, when you talk, talk in those sort of numbers, you know, it's very hard to imagine all the raw material and how much all of that has come from where it comes from. We do not consume a lot in this in this country. It comes down a hopper. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah. It's slowly from a hopper above the machine. Yeah. goes through a machine where the ingredients get mixed. At a set rate, because the the whole thing is um, consistent, regulated, right? Consistent regulation, you see. Uniform. And it comes down and it's cooked and all that rubbish, and then it ends up in a packet, and then they send it to your local supermarket. And in our case, Morrison's. Yeah, and that's <laughs> progress, isn't it? Yeah. See, the thing is, you see, if we had to do all them by hand, we'd be waiting a long time, wouldn't you? Would, yeah. Especially, so, especially yeah. when when some of the staff would be nipping out the bat for a fag. So well, wait. I wouldn't know about that. No, no, I'm not suggesting that you by any means, but I mean, just you know, some people do, don't they? Yeah, some people uh, do. I stopped, pop- I stopped popping out the bat for a fag what um, nearly two years ago now. Oh, congratulations! On the fourth of June. Oh well, there'll be a celebration coming up there. Yes, yeah, nearly your anniversary of not smoking. Mm, well, yeah. You know. Um, it's just, I try not to keep them, so then it doesn't remind me, uh, you know, it's, it's like I don't miss it then. Well, you get on your bike now, don't you? You're an avid cyclist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got the clap. <laughs> Give me the clap. <laughs> um, anyway, on that note, um, uh, yes. On that note, um, yeah, um, yeah, I, I do like cycling, and the reason why is three things. A, it keeps you fit. Yeah. B, it, you, you get around and see area around you. Get to, and the here is absolutely gorgeous. 
absolutely gorgeous. The what is? Um, the air? Because of health reasons, I can't drive. So cycling is my way of getting out. Yeah. And it gives me what I need, you know. And I love doing long journeys, long tours. So, um, so like, I hope when all this is over, one of the first things, somebody said to me, what's the first thing you're going to do when the lockdown goes? And I say, um, pack everything and lock up, because I'll be gone. <laughs> um, my first port of call will be to go and see friends in um, Birmingham, um, Derby and Scunthorpe, and then work my way down to uh, Norfolk, Essex, across to uh, West London to see my mum, down to Bristol to see my son, and then back up. All on your bike? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. That will be some 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 journey. That's impossible. Yeah. That's <laughs> impossible. You can't possibly do it. Not in a day, surely. Well, not in a day, no. no. I, said, no. I did add when lockdown's over. Yeah, oh yes, of course, but even so, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we, we hope to chart your journey. When you, when you li- launch well, off... Well, this is the thing, you see. Mm-hmm. I shall be in touch. What I'll do yeah. is if it all comes off and I'm able to do it, yeah. I shall, keep, I shall uh, keep you up to date. Good. We want a map where we can put a little picture of a of you, with, yeah, say you a bread have, roll. You can have, you have a little bike, a little red bike going around the country. <laughs> We can find out where you are each day. Brilliant. Mark, lovely to talk to you. I my ears out. I thought you said a little red dyke. No, not a little red dyke. Little lead dyke? No, 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 no. Nobody from from Hebden Bridge is coming with me. Marvellous. All right. (laughs) We better go. Uh, Catch up with you. you Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we go. Mark Donny McLeod telling us how to do crumpets, and he'll be doing them on his little red dyke as he bursts (laughs) around the country after lockdown is done. We will go back into the video box now. Somehow. I think I'm in the video box now, to be honest with you. Um, Right. Okay, Gabriel. Do you remember Gabriel? Nice bloke. He is in Glastonbury and he gave us this um, rather interesting video uh, yesterday and the day before, in fact. And this is part three of his explorations um, in uh, the world of Gabriel and... Uh, the industrial side of it, as I remember. I'm just trying to remember now to get my reset my brain. And I'm hoping that when I press the button this time, it, it works. Let's see what happens. So, we've arrived in Street. Um, street, which is a mile, f- physically a mile, as a bird flies, from Glastonbury to Street, and yet the two towns could not be more different. Um, chalk and cheese. And even there's been some rivalry between the two towns in the past, but hey, what can you say? Got this interesting building to my right. Uh, I believe it was connected with the tanning industry, but I'm not certain. And I will find out and let you know more when I find out more. But for now, let's walk into street. We're going to start off with a look at Holy Trinity Church, which is just in front of me here. The Church of the Holy Trinity dates from the 14th century, but Like many churches, it has been given the Victorian treatment in the 19th century. The first recorded vicar here was John de Hank in 1304. I'm in the graveyard here and I've got to say that I've never seen so many yew trees in one graveyard. They're everywhere, look. Everywhere you look, there's there's yew tree after yew tree after yew tree. I mean, there are other trees. Religious use of this site predates the current church building. This area was at the western end of a wooden causeway from Glastonbury, which began over at Pompal's Bridge. Look at these beautiful copper beech trees. Aren't they stunning? This really is a beautiful church in a lovely setting. As I walk around, you can see the stonework of this building. The chancel predates the rest of the building, having been built in 1270, and the original tracery can still clearly be seen on the eastern window. Some sort of door um, been blocked off at some point. And we've come round to the uh, west end of the church, which is traditionally where they keep the towers. 
and this church is no different. So right across the road from Holy Trinity Church, which is to my right now, on my left, is Stroud College, a central part of street, and has been bringing students here since the 1800s when it was opened as a technical college. Stroud College originally opened in the 1890s as a technical institute, remember them? Then reopened in 1973 and its current guys as a college. Many millions of pounds have been spent on the campus since then and now students come from all over to study everything up to foundation degree level. Stroud Campus is also the home to Stroud Theatre, an internationally renowned theatre space that brings touring companies and artists from all over the world. There we go. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Another exciting uh, element to Glastonbury that you didn't know about. Bringing it up to date, I think. Let's uh, see uh, what the lovely Julia... Let's see if she's unmuted herself on this particular occasion. Are you unmuted, lovely Julia? I am. Ha ha! <laughs> I remembered. You remembered. Yeah, well done. Um, how are the comments going? There's a lot of battering talk going on yeah, out there. Um, uh, Ron, was it Ron asked about um, uh, eating crumpets or how people like to eat them, whether whether you have to cook it or toast oh, it. Oh, yeah. But Ed Loud was pointing out that they are actually already cooked by the time you get them, otherwise it's just batter. Um, and you don't have to toast them, but they are nice and warm. They're nice, warm and crispy, aren't they? I use, yeah. uh, do mine nice and crispy. Um, yeah, so uh, that, anyway, uh, I guess uh, that's another one. What we want is Ed Loud to give us uh, a demonstration on a video. That would yeah. Be, uh, on his method of crumpet batter. That would be great, yeah. Uh, show us how you do it. There we are. That's a, another little uh, project uh, for you to, to get on with, which would be... <laughs> Which would be lovely. Uh, By the way, Gabriel, lovely video. Loved all the trees, especially you. You are one of my favourites. But Copper Beach, I also have a little soft spot for Copper Beach. Oh, there. the Copper Beach. So lovely. Were, were absolutely lovely. I was looking at the Copper Beach thinking I'd love to copper feel <laughs> of the <laughs> Copper Beach. You know, they Honestly, just they, they look really nice. You sit beneath the canopy of a, um, of a Copper Beach and you look up. You, oh, it's just fantastic. It comes out with all sorts of different colours and shades and you can get some fantastic photographs up like that. It's funny because when we go out and do our walks, we notice the Copper Beach quite a lot. But actually, I've just been thinking on the walks that I've done recently, I haven't seen any Copper Beaches. Really? In, no, in the videos that I've been making around the Stenning area in the last week, um, they were ash, hawthorn, some oak, <laughs> lots of sycamore, a couple of maples. Um... And that's about it, really. Certainly no no yew trees uh, and no copper beach. Oh, beach. There was plenty of beach, but, you know, your bog-standard uh, beach that likes a bit of chalk. Yeah. That's well, when it. you did the North Lansing one, you were very... When you were near the... Um, oh, that steakhouse... Um, there was, there's a lovely, big, beautiful holm oak in that car park and a lovely old yew tree. It's not an ancient... Excuse me, it's not an ancient one, but it no. is lovely nonetheless. Yes, it's not a copper beach, though. It's not a copper beach, no, but I was just pointing out that you have seen a yew tree. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, I've, I have, I, yes, I've seen a, a yew tree. <laughs> that's uh, it, Miller and Carter, that's the one. Well done, Josephine. Thank you very much. Uh, Glastonbury says, especially against the blue skies that we've been having, yes, they can look absolutely radiant, absolutely radiant. Mm. Uh, Jeff Kellison is asking, did you get to see the Redwoods when you were on this that side of the pond? I'm guessing he's speaking to you because I've not been there since I was three years old. Um, when the Redwoods, um, I, do you know, when I was on that side of the pond in 2006 and 2007, I wasn't that interested in trees. But what I do remember about the trees is there seemed to be an, an inordinate amount and an, an over an abundance of pine trees. They just seemed to, we went to uh, Mansfield, which is in the state of New York. And it's up there on the hills, not not the city of New York, but in the state of New York. It's up there on the in the hills, and um, you just drive for something like two hours, and you just see pine trees, pine trees, pine trees on the hills, and you don't see the definition of the hills. Well, you see the definition, like the hills, just furry, 
because it's just pine trees. What you don't get like with um, the South Downs when we were driving is you didn't see gaps where you saw earth and the grass and stuff. It was just pine tree, whole hill pine tree and then another undulation, pine trees. I got sick and tired of pine trees. I don't know whether you can tell. They really didn't uh, inf influence. I mean, it, you know, at first it was like, wow, look at those great big hills covered in pine trees. And then eventually, two hours later, it was like, give me a deciduous, please. Give me something. Oh. Give me a broadleaf. <laughs> give me a broadleaf. I am sick and tired of these pine trees. Having said that, I am absolutely desperate to get over to California and see those gorgeous redwood forests, the giant sequo sequoias, before they get ploughed down by old... Um, president there oh have they got a president that wants to knock them down yeah he has been making threats on them well, i'd like to, like to see him try give him an axe and see him do it you want them down chop them down yourself i've got a katash oh a katash which is that um what's that uh that's emerald again yes, yes. It's emerald again. Yes. nearly had mojo but he's disappeared again <laughs> Emerald looked at him like, get away. Uh, Robert Croser says, I sent three videos today, a sea of trees. Um, I haven't got any videos from you, Robert, so I don't know where they went. Um, Indeed. Certainly, th th you're not in the, uh, unless you've just, just sent them. If you've just mm. sent them, then that's, oh, here we go. Yes, I can see you have just sent them, but you sent them before we started, the, um, after you started the show. So that you'll have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't happen by magic, you know. He has to actually uh, download them and line them up and sort them out and make sure they're right for resolution and yada 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 blah blah blah. Skip to the end. Exactly, that's exactly what I do. I do yeah. work. Yada yada yada. Mike, skip to the end. Mike Dixon said, "Our cat Foxy has just asked me to say hello to Julia's cat. Foxy is age nine and single. She loves eating cat treats whilst watching the Verb show." <laughs> I'm age ten and single, but uh, I don't eat cat food. Um, Emerald is age 10 and single as well, but uh, she has an overbearing uh, sister <laughs> who is also 10. I do also have an overbearing sister. That's also true. <laughs> uh, the uh, similarities are, are growing, although unlike a cat, I don't have whiskers and hair and a tail. But I can tell a few tales, as Philip Mercer will tell you. Uh, Douglas Fur, Yeah, Douglas, uh, Douglas Fur and his mate Douglas Barder. Uh, but Douglas wouldn't let her in, you see. There's, there's a joke there, isn't there? There's a joke there about the RAF and his thing and the famous something and they came in and he wouldn't let his wife in. Why was that? Oh, Douglas Bader. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, needs, needs a bit of... Ernie can work on that one because he likes that sort of thing. Uh, Ed Loud says, looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing the Robert Croser uh, videos. Um... Beach writers ask, do birch trees grow in England? Oh, yes. Yes, they Thank do. You. Um, birch trees, of course, very famous in schools with headmasters. Oh, <laughs> for the, the birch whip cane thing? For the ca yes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's it. It wasn't a cane. Uh, we, we talk of it as a cane, but um, it was... Called of birch. You'd, you'd have... Um, a, a, yeah, the, a, a whack... Yeah. With the birch, and uh, not uh, not very pleasant. Now, Emerald is playing the uh, the game of changing sex and turning into a slightly smaller, younger cat. Yes, the Hitler <laughs> cat, as you don't like it being called. Just because he's got a mark under his bloody nose doesn't mean he's a blinking Hitler cat. God damn it! <laughs> press my buttons, why don't you? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about that in chat earlier on. Don't press people women's buttons, especially not today. <laughs> Why not today? I don't know why not today exactly, but... And where are don't... the buttons that we're not supposed to press? That's what I want to know. <laughs> silver birch. We also have silver birch, and I think a downy birch is another birch that we have. Um, so that's uh, very nice. A massive cat. What a beautiful moggy, says uh, Glastonbury Gabriel. <laughs> Lovely cats, Julia. Thank Mo you. Mojo has grown big. Yeah, do you remember? Did you, did you bring Mojo into the studio? You brought one of the cats in the studio, didn't you? So, uh, Mojo came into the studio, didn't he? Yeah, and he was like a little, you know, the size he of was a, pinky. A, 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 a size of a hamster or something. <laughs> he was a little bit bigger than that. He was um, the size of four hamsters. <laughs> oh, right. Fair enough. 
If anyone wants That's to call in, uh, the number here is 07934746790. You're very welcome to call in and tell us about your favourite tree or indeed your favourite cat. Um, that would be very nice. Yes. See how desperate we are for material on a Friday night, ladies and gentlemen. On a Friday cat night. Cat dating. <laughs> cat dating. We will uh, pay you off with a lovely cat. Also, if you want to buy one of our special VE Day celebrations, only 55 quid from me, but a lot cheaper via Julia. Uh, well yeah. worth it. You can sew them on your camera bags. And have a bit of Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill is well worth having at the moment because we will be celebrating 80 years of the Battle of Britain very soon. We've got to get through 80 years of Dunkirk where we will have lots of little ships uh, going around in the paddling pool. Uh, now, it's the sort of game that you can play in the bath, in actual fact. And I'm sure that, lovely Julia, you've probably got a number of ships, ships in your bath that you play yep. with your son's probably got some so Jojo plays with you can you can do the escape from dunkirk and you can have the little boats floating across one end best not to use too much bubble bath uh, no. when you do that we've got another call we've got a, we've got a oh. call hello cool. caller hi richard and julia it's lisa from leeds hello lisa, from... lisa from leeds hi me cheering up today oh no why because the most gorgeous little cat had kittens outside in my garden on Saturday and I had to ring an animal rescue people to come and pick her up and they picked her up today and the cats were like five or six days old or whatever, however many days it's been since Saturday because I've lost count. <laughs> um, but she was just so beautiful and I, I wish I could have kept her. She was all white on the underside. Oh, and it was ginger and tabby colours on top. She was so oh, lovely. So she, she was a tortoise shell then. Yeah, I, oh, I don't know. I wouldn't know what to call her. But she was really beautiful. So hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm just slightly confused. It, 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 was she your cat? No, she wasn't mine. I would have kept her, but I've, like Julia, I've got four cats. So she was a stray who ha who gave birth? Yeah. Oh, well, see. I think I think she was someone else's cats, kittens, kittens. So I think that um, they they weren't really looked after. I think they were just roaming. Yeah. Um, Sad that happens, these, isn't it? So, yeah, so, so, one, so the cat and the kittens were taken away. Yeah. Oh. Um, she, My heart I breaks mean, for you. <laughs> yeah, I I cried. <laughs> I cried. Oh, I would have too. I'd have been uncontrollable. She's so she's so beautiful, um, but. Yeah, I've got my own, so I couldn't keep her. I would have kept her. Oh. Yeah, you give her a really good home. <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm so sorry to hear that. It's, a, it's such a shame, and of course that must go on all over the place. Yet we don't hear about it all the time. But it's a very sad story. I suppose there are catteries, is it, that would take them away? Um. Well, I think she's gone to somewhere called Henry's. What was it called? Henry's Cat. Henry's Haven. Henry's oh. Haven. If you look it up on Facebook, I think they they go to foster homes and then they they're taken to good homes. Yeah. Um, and they, I think they Henry Haven visit people's homes and make sure that they go into a, a nice home and things. So uh, excellent. It's good to know when they get vetted to make sure that they're there's a good home they're going to. Yeah. I just thought if she stayed where she is, then she'd just end up, you know, that her kittens would reproduce and. It just yeah. yeah a, a cycle and i think one of That's the right. other kids i think one of the other cats on the street is also pregnant so i think um oh, no. it's so sad hopefully well, she's got an owner that, that that loves her wants her and and pays attention and will yeah, you know well, give her a safe place well, at home to to give birth yeah i suppose um, the, you know it's the spring isn't it i don't know whether cats are well, maybe julia well you both would know the cats are, are seasonal in terms of having Naughty times with other cats, or well, do they just no? Think... Because I spared all mine, so I don't know. Oh right, I, I believe they're capable of it all year round when when they're domesticated indoors. But um, they definitely get uh, more excitable in the summer. At least this one does. Yeah, well, She's the hyper maternal emerald, is aren't you? She'd love for me to uh, you know um, rescue an orphaned kitten, and and she'd help me raise it, no problem, wouldn't you, baby? Oh. 
<laughs> she, she practically raised her own kittens and her sister's kittens because her, her, her sister was a pretty useless mum, I must say. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, yeah. I, I had one cat and then there was um, another little cat in the garden, same situation, and I took that one in and two of its kittens and <laughs> gave one away. Um, but I couldn't do it again because I couldn't afford it and, yeah, how many cats can I have? But... Yeah, I would have kept that one. You know, yeah, unfortunately, uh, there's only so many cats you can rescue at any one time, isn't there? Yeah. Are people... so it makes... Sorry, no, Richard. Go, no, it's all right. I was, uh, you carry on. No, I was just going to say, um, it makes you want to be one of those rescuers, you know, that keep them and then foster them and rehome them. Mm. Well, I don't know, because you, then you've got to, you get to know it as a kitten and then you've got to let go, haven't you? You've got to send it on its way. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really true. hard. But, um, yeah. I did name I did name it and then got attached to it. <laughs> so I cried when it left. <laughs> it's like Monster Inc. When you when you name it, you get attached to it. <laughs> yes, there you are. You see. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that um, that was uh, a a bit of a a bit of a blow. But your other cats are all right, are they? Oh yeah, they're all well and happy. Um, whilst I'm on the phone. Mm. <laughs> just random um off the cat subject but when you got into television how did you how did you do it how did you do you uh, did you approach a company or did you approach the tv company or what happened there well how do you do that um i'd i'd been i'd sort of done some extra work um in lots of tv programs going through my career um because I'd, ever since a kid i wanted to be in television as it were that's what I wanted to be. And uh, I struggled and struggled and struggled. And I did the extra thing, thinking that you would start at the bottom and work your way up. I thought that was a very noble way of doing things. Uh, it turns out that once you're an extra, you're always an extra. And it's, it's, it's very, very rare that somebody will spot you and promote you up the, up the chain. Um, mm. So mostly, you know, and, and when you're an extra, you were treated like the worst. You know, you were treated as the third person. Um, really? Because you were just... That was sad. You, I, t I know, it was sad. You're, you're basically, you're moving furniture. You're a bit of um, set dressing that wanders about. Um, yeah, you're a prop. You're a prop, yeah. You're there to make the police station look like there are other police officers, not, not that they have any. I was very often, my, my main part, my main claim to fame when I was in the bill was the white shirt behind frosted glass at the end of the corridor. I was superb at that sort of acting. I was really that. good. <laughs> that flash of white. People would stop their televisions and rewind and go, my God, was that Richard Phillips? That, that, <laughs> that bloke there down the end of that corridor, that flash of white shirt, that epaulette. That was his, wasn't it? 192. I'm sure that was his shoulder. <coughs> uh, yeah. You... Uh, I'm sure you could have been one of the bobbies, Richard. <laughs> oh, we did have fun. We did have lots of fun doing it. And, and um, I do, uh, I go round, well, not during lockdown, but I do occasionally get booked up to be... Um, a speaker and I talk about my life as an extra and, and people of a certain age have that memory because they've seen programmes like The Bill and Poirot and these sort of things. But to, when I did my children's television series, I was desperately trying to get in, but I made a pilot on the film and I sent it to the broadcasters and said, hey, have a look at this. I'm a children's television producer. <laughs> And we've made this pilot and we sent them out to the main broadcasters, about eight VHSs, I think we had at the time. We'd shot it on film and had it put onto VHS and we sent them round and we'd made the whole pilot of a 10 minute kids programme. Um, and two companies came back and, and were, were interested and subsequently out of the two, we went with the worst that we could have possibly have chosen. Um, I know, but you don't know that at the time, and and then the the rest is um, a catastrophe. Mm. Sorry, history. Did you? Um, I've heard of um, a green card, but what is it, and do you have to have one if you want to be on the telly? Um, the green card is, I think, when you're working in America. The equity card is what you had to have back in the day, which was a union card. So you had to be. When I was starting in the 70s, the unions ran industry. 
And if you didn't have a union card, you weren't a member of the actors' equity membership, you, you were, in theory, you weren't supposed to um, work in television. And I remember being on the set of various television programmes and a bloke from the union would come round and inspect. We'd all have to produce our union cards so that... I mean, it was the most backward-thinking thing in the world. And the irony of the whole thing was that in order to get work, you had to be a member of equity. But to become a member of equity, you had to have work. So it was a catch. How, how do you ever get one? <laughs> well, that, there, were, there were these sort of loopholes that uh, you had to sort of tr transgress. You don't have to do that now. It's, I mean, you can be a member of equity if you like. Uh, but you, it's not a necessary requirement. Uh, now television would take anybody. Uh, except me. Elfwald, Elfwald says the Ac the Academy Award for Best Flash of White Shirt goes to. <laughs> yeah, I rarely wear a white shirt now because uh, I hate to be noticed in the street. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be recognised. I hate, you know, if you walk into one of these um, window showrooms and if I walk behind one that's got frosted glass in, I mean, the women would swoon. <laughs> yeah, um, just... they don't need more. Just interested. Sorry, if it brought back bad memories. <laughs> it's br brought back bad memories. I don't know. You make it sound awful. <laughs> How you were treated? Well, it, it wasn't that you were treated badly. It's just that out of you, you know, you think of it being very glamorous. It's that the last thing television is is glamorous. We did. Um, I did an episode of Poirot. Do you remember Poirot with uh, David Suchet, yeah. who's the detective? And we had an episode, um, and again, the agent, my agent, Marcel, lovely Marcel, she used to smoke like a chimney, and uh, she would say, oh, Richard Darling, Richard Darling got this job um, on Poirot, you know, LWT's Poirot. And I go, oh, yeah, yeah. She said, oh, they, they, they need a whole bunch of extras on Brighton Beach. It's going to be marvellous. So you say, oh, OK, when is it? You put it in your book, and you turn up, and, you know, it's, Poirot, David Suchet and um, uh, Inspector Jupp, who was, uh, what was the name of the actor, um, Philip Jackson, um, who was, all right, Poirot, all right, Poirot, have we solved the case yet, Poirot? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we turn up and it's supposed to be this um, beautiful summer scene and we're dressed as extras on the prom in 1930s beach wear. And I was dressed in this, you remember the old sort of strongman's outfit, the sort of black strongman's sort of... Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean. And uh, I was supposed to be strutting across the, the, uh, the prom, on this section of prom. Um, and normally, you know, the actors and the cameras are all around with you and you're there just to make the place look busy. Well, on this particular occasion, the camera happened to be in the hotel across the road on about the sixth or seventh floor, and it was looking over Poirot's shoulder. So you saw a tiny glimpse in the shot of the beach below. And so there was this right. tiny bit of prom which they closed off, and there was about eight or nine extras, of which I was one, with a, sec with a third assistant with a walkie-talkie, talking back to them. Meanwhile, the other side of this tiny sort of 50 foot stretch of prom is, is the real world again so you've got people walking their dogs and people on bikes and little old ladies with b baskets in, in everyday clothes wondering what the hell's going on because there's no camera and nothing else just these people dressed in 1930s beach wear who are also standing doing nothing waiting for a, a moment where you would hear over the radio OK stand by uh, camera turning and cue the extras, then suddenly we would leap into life and walk across this tiny little 50-yard stretch. And then, we, OK, we're going again. Uh, can you reset? So everyone would reset. The thing that I didn't tell you, of course, this being this lovely summer scene, is it was in November that they filmed it. It was freezing bloody cold, and we <laughs> are almost naked with our little beach balls and 90 vintage bicycles and all of this in, in our very skimpy outfits, freezing our nuts off, doing this one moment. And, and of course, in the final take, you barely notice any of this. So, um, yeah, but we weren't treated bad. It's just that 
the things you had to do were just very peculiar. That's my favourite aspect of television, though. That I, I wanted to be an actress when I was younger, and my mum told me to get my head out of the clouds. So instead, I did intermediate business studies and quit after about twelve weeks oh, because well. it bored me stupid. So I should have I should have just gone into a I don't know some performing arts thing or other, but I didn't. What do you do now? What do I do now? I'm a cleaner. <laughs> oh well. I'm a I'm a furloughed cleaner, uh, um, but. A f- a no, fur- oh, a furloughed a- cleaner, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's just um, your house. It's spotless. Yep. Uh, but that's the most exciting part of telly, the fact that you were filming on November, but when you watch it back, yes, it, it looked like summer. Or, I don't know, those kinds of... Oh, you uh, knew. Yes. You knew that it was breathing, but the people watching didn't know. I think that's just awesome. That is the magic. I mean, that is the, very much the magic of it. Is You know, you'd get involved and you'd be filming a Christmas special. and In July. <laughs> in July, exactly. And so you're all dressed up in heavy coats and whatever it is, and it's a Christmas thing, and there'd be, you know, Father Christmas and all the decorations, and you'd walk into onto the set and you, you really believe it is what it is. And then you walk... I mean, so many places I've filmed doing this extra work, you'd, you'd turn up... I remember we did... I did something for... Do you remember Adam Faith? He, is, he used to be a singer in the 50s, was very big, um, and they, he, he had a comeback series in the mid to late 80s. I can't remember what it was called. I think it might have been a Love Hurts type thing. And he was an old singer in this I mean it was an old singer in real life but Adam Faith and they recreated his bedroom and his his flat in this derelict hospital and you get you turn up at this derelict hospital and it is a an old building that's falling to bits and there's holes in the roofs and and there's you know production vehicles in the driveway and you think hello and there's cables everywhere and you worm your way into this building and then suddenly you go behind this door and you're into a very modern uh, flat that's actually got a, um, a pitched roof, so it was like an, an attic, with fake sun coming in. You're inside, but they've got big lights to give you the illusion of fake sun. And whilst you're working in the set, you think you're actually in somebody's house. And then you walk out again, and suddenly there you are in the in the disused hospital. It's it's a, it is a fantasy world. It really is. Yeah, artistic license, def, definitely, isn't it? <clears throat> anyway, Lisa, thank thank you so much. Oh, sorry for taking your time. I just thought I'd ask while I was on the. Yeah, floor. no, it's been that's been very interesting. We'd better go and show another of our videos. Thanks for calling, yeah, and thanks thank for telling you. us about the cat. And I hope we've cheered you up a little bit. Oh, you have. Thank you. Oh, See you later. So good. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. There we go. Lovely Lisa from Leeds. That was uh, that was uh, not... shame about the cat, though, Julia, isn't it? Yeah, sadly. There's a lot of that that goes on. Oh. At, least, at least they weren't put in a bag like they used to do and chucked in the Thames, that sort of thing. Oh, gosh, no, that still happens as well, but let's not go there. No, not going there. Not going there. We're going to go and uh, look at a video <laughs> very okay. quickly, very quickly. Hang on, I've got to take off the phone call thing and visit the uh, video box. Oh, I've done it again. How do I do this? No, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on. I'm trying to turn him off. There we go. It's because I forget to switch them up. They switch on and you have to turn them off. I forget. So, um, right, we have got, we've got Wendy and Thingy, we've got Barry and Adrian. Who would you like to see, the lovely Julia, Barry or Adrian? I'll let you choose. Well, let's go Adrian first. We'll save that Barry for later. Righto. Adrian. Now, um, I've just got to remember what Adrian um, was on about. <laughs> sorry. Oh, yes, that's right. I've got it. Of course. I remember. Adrian. Sorry, Adrian. I don't mean to be like that, but you know what it's like. This. Well, maybe you don't. You should try coming in here and sitting in the hot seat for a while. Um, yeah, Adrian has taken us up onto that um, interestingly named place. I can't remember now, but it, he mentions it's an interestingly named place. And he gets, and I've got a question for you afterwards, um, these wonderful views. And I want to know about the water, because I didn't know they must be big reservoirs or lakes. Um, so I, that's the question that I want to find out from you, Adrian. What are they? Or what are they called? So here he is, the lovely Adrian, high up in the ionosphere over Birmingham. And I pressed the button and nothing bloody happened, did it? 
<laughs> Why is that? Uh, I need to go there. Here we go. Well, this is one of the finest views of Birmingham we'll ever like you to see. Good morning, Richard. This is Adrian at Turbo Stream. So this is the view from Frankie Beaches, overlooking Barclay Green Reservoir, right into town. What we call in, in the Birmingham, we call town the city centre. Lovely little tranquil spot. Let's see if we can zoom in and see something. Unfortunately, the footage is a bit shaky because I don't have my little tripod with me today. It's on my bike. But you can see there the views. Into the city centre of Birmingham, got the University of Birmingham there. It's a fantastic little place. There's also one little thing I want to show you where I'm stood. So look at that now. Just in the woods where I am, there's a little memorial stone. And at the top it's got Austin 7 on it. In memory of Stanley Howard Edge, 1903 to 1990, who helped create the motor for the millions. That's a nice little tribute to somebody. Don't know who Howard Edge is. But this is the view we can look at. Let's look it over towards the black country. And just slowly pan round to the right. You can see the landscape. Very hard to film on a phone and get the true majesty of the place. But you can see it's a beautiful day and a beautiful view of Birmingham. So with that, it's back to the studio. Fantastic stuff. So that's the uh, that's the views. The, the uh, beautiful views of Birmingham. <laughs> I like the way you put that. Uh, but so what I want to know is what is the what is the water there? Because there seems to be quite a lot of water. Uh, oh, here we go. The water is Bartley Green Reservoir. The water comes from the Eden Valley in Wales. Oh, right. And do they uh, do they let people swim in it, or do they let uh, people go on boats in it? Is, it, is there, you know, those, uh, what are those water, water skis? Let's uh, just put uh, the lovely Julia back on, uh, if I can find out how to do that. There we go. Um, have you ever been water skiing, Julia? No, I haven't, but it looks amazing fun. Um, yeah, I've, I, I've always worried about doing anything like water skiing or, or skiing or any of those, um, what do you call that, sort of water sports or... Um, action sports because i've always worried about breaking a leg and not being able to work being self-employed yeah i can understand how that'd be an issue but um you're right yeah, yeah i just heard great clunking sounds oh, that would be the door opening and closing oh, and I then see. phone going off over there and everything uh, uh, but um uh, yeah no i can understand why you'd be worried about that um but uh, where i grew up in saudi arabia but, <laughs> the, um I had plenty of rides on various, um, what are they called? Uh, the... Pedalos? No, no, Cable no. Cable cars? It's like a motorbike, but with... Jet but skis. goes off the water. Jet ski, that's the one. Yeah. There's another name for it, isn't there? It doesn't matter, but yeah. I've ridden those, but I've never had the opportunity to, um, to actually go water skiing, but that does look amazing fun. We have another caller. Hello to you. Ooh. Hello, and this is Barbara Charles calling. Hello, yes, Barbara one. Charles. Barbara. And I thought... Bye. Anything to stop you from running your mouth, so here I am. <laughs> Anyone would think she You're knows you, Richard. By, by fearsome women, I'm telling you. <laughs> fearsome, <laughs> fearsome women. We want uh, some fearsome women on this show. And how, so anyway, how are you, Barbara? Um, are you all right? I'm very well. I, um, I have a bloke here for the weekend. I know, it's breaking lockdown. Um, but he went out to, to do, they like to do business, or they like to think they're doing business, so he's on his computer and he's doing business, whatever that is, so uh, I got rid of him for a few minutes, so I thought I'd take a break. <laughs> yeah, so here I am. So here you are, and uh, somebody yeah. told me, I can't remember, oh, I think it was in the UK uh, that it was blowing a blizzard. Have you, you haven't had snow and stuff up where you are, have you? No, I haven't, but um, I'm, I'm, I subscribe to a uh, train video man, and he's up in New York State near Lake Erie, which is one of the Great Lakes. It you is. may be familiar with the map of America. And um, he um, was standing uh, by Lake Erie filming the snow today, oh. May 8th, 
2020. Wow. And it was snowing. Hudson, yeah, so. Hudson, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Yes, Holmes is the how you... Yeah, there you go. Yes. <laughs> Every child knows that. Uh, I, I only found out about that last year, so... Huh, oh, right. Oh, okay. Um, but yes, they, they definitely had snow in upstate New York. Um, we've just had a little bit of rain, but it's, um, we have had our three or four days of spring. We usually get winter and then spring three or four days and then it goes right into summer so it's really a crappy climate and do you have those um oh what are those funny buzzard not buzzardy those those insects that that do like uh it's not sequoia are they sequoia no not sequoia they're trees aren't they um there's a there's an insect that they have um a moment and there's billions and billions of them a friend of mine in chicago um, oh, chica- not cicadas. Uh, yes, uh, cicadas. What did you say? L L. Cicadas. Cicadas. Say it again. Cicadas. Yes. Cicadas. C i c a d a s. Cicadas. Yeah. Cicadas. Um, They're very noisy. Yeah. Do you get those? Oh yeah, in the summer, sure. Because mm-hmm. we we Leave don't. your bedroom window open, and you hear them like for hours at night. Right. And they you... they compete with the crickets. So it's um, do you have a do you have orchestral battle? Do you have big cockroaches over there? Uh, it depends on where you live. I what? don't have any. No, no, no. Of course, I didn't. I'm not implying. No, no. Because we don't have cockroaches, do we, Julia? No, no. It's it's funny because I never saw a cockroach until I lived in Kuwait when I was about the eleven, ten, eleven. That was very bizarre. They're, yeah. They're, they're weird looking, but you know what? They're not as scary as I thought they would be. <laughs> They're extremely dirty. Oh, but yeah, I can imagine. Good immune system, yeah. Not, mm. not a nice thing to have. In New York, everyone has them. Um, yeah, it's pretty disgusting. I mean, even in the posh apartments. Um, I woke up one night and there was one crawling up my toothbrush. Oh. No, that I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, not your toothbrush. <laughs> That's very, yeah. that's um, very true. So we, we, I mean, I think we get get it quite lucky. We don't have those things that when you open the, the, the loo seat, there is something ready to pounce onto you that they have in Australia. We don't have any of that. Um, you mean snakes? No, isn't there, there is a spider that lives, so I'm told, I don't know whom oh, yeah. by now. That, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, that can come up through the system, system and then um, bite your... <laughs> Bite your bottom. Bump, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, that, that's, that's, they're not legal in Philadelphia. We don't, we don't have any of that. The uh, center city has a lot of rats. In fact, I've seen sewer rats uh, that are big and white and very ugly. and White? Uh, not appealing. Um, and I have a lot of mice, but that's because I have a lot of fields. Right. And I'm definitely afraid of mice. Oh, are you? And they're... Yeah. Wait a minute. You said at the beginning um, that 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 you we had. What did you say? Not feisty women, but um, something women, Vic- not vicious women. Or maybe it was feisty women. But you're feisty women. Yeah. Yeah, but you're frightened well, of mice. Um, well, yeah, but when I was um, twelve, one got in my bed and ran all the way up my leg and up my back, so it terrorized me for the rest of my oh, life. Oh right. Well, that would yeah, that would do it to me. Yeah. It was very suggestions. I'm not really afraid of anything else. I mean, guns. But unfortunately, mice are just too small to shoot. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. honey, I, I'm I'm just a nice southern girl who believes in the power of of propulsion of a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Glastonbury yeah. Gabriel says funnelback or dunny spider could be what you were talking about. Yeah, dunny spider probably because a dunny we know Ooh. is a is yeah, an Australian yeah. for Lou. Uh, Judith yeah. says that uh, we do have cockroaches we do get them but they must be quite rare I mean, obviously they can survive anywhere they could survive a nuclear holocaust but um but no i, th- I think they prefer like... warmer climes though don't they Portsmouth. 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 they climb everywhere they climb inside walls they climb behind wallpaper oh. apparently but dirt uh, dirt attracts them so oh mm. right you know. oh have you ever seen yeah. the um the film joe's apartment i'm mm-hmm. sure that featured cockroaches in his flat his apartment oh, when yeah, that's in. what I need. Nightmares about big bugs. Yeah, look forward to that. Yeah. No, it is a funny film though because uh, the cockroaches sing and dance and it's it's 
it's funny. So Josephine wants... I'm not beginning to worry about you in lockdown, Julia. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I, oh no, I was mad before lockdown. Yeah, I was going to say, I've known her before lockdown. Uh, J- J- Josephine says, uh, "What kind of gun are you armed with, Barbara?" It's called the Zig Sauer. It's a semi-automatic pistol. The cartridge has seventeen bullets. So even if you're an extremely lousy shot, if a guy comes into your bedroom at three o'clock in the morning and he's up to no good, he'll get what? the big biggest reception of his entire life. One of those 17 will actually get him. Does it fire 17 in one burst? No. If you can fire one and take your finger off the trigger, or if you keep your finger on the trigger, like that. Right. So bye-bye, burglars. Do you have to go and down a range or anything to practice so that they can give you... Yeah. Sure. I have to have a license, too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, I have a license. It's a registered gun, and I have a license to carry it. Right. Big Mama mm. ain't going to be fooled by nobody. <laughs> but you know, this has some. This city has some really dodgy places, and if you're coming home from an evening out, sometimes so it we, helps to have a little security. So, what do you carry yeah. it in the car? No, I carry it on my person. Oh, do it, blimey! What a seventeen-gun whatever it was. How big is it? It's a small gun. It's very. Oh. It's lightweight for a, 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 a handgun, and you carry it in your coat pocket with the, the gun pointing down and the safety's on. But if someone should accost you, which is not unusual in Philadelphia, um, then you just take the safety off, and your hand is in your pocket, and you pull up the gun, and then you shoot the bastard. He'll remember you for the rest of his life. You may get a hole in your fur coat, though, for doing this. Have you ever had to? That. Have you ever had to expose the gun to somebody? Yes, I did. Um, but um, a guy was holding up um, me and my date. This was years ago. But um, he had a bigger gun than I did. And when he pulled it out, the uh, criminal uh, had second thoughts about. Um, you know, Using robbing it. us. Plus, the, my date was filled off your policeman, so... Oh, right. So, <laughs> so nice oh, I see. Up. So the pair of you the pair of you had guns on you, so you'd gone out on a date. How romantic. <laughs> Except yeah, that you've nice. both <laughs> got my guns bigger than yours, baby. <laughs> oh, well, I'm staying with you then, honey. And then you're accosted yeah. on the way out of that. And it's like... it's like Was it a, like the scene from... Um, um, oh, what's the Australian bloke, you know, from... Um, yeah, I was thinking of him. My gun, yeah, you call With the out knife, call out a knife. I'll show you a knife. Yeah. yeah. That ain't Crocodile knife, this is a knife. <laughs> My God. It is another world. You know, we... The thing is, we speak the same language, sort of. Yes. But it is so different, and that's what makes it so fascinating. Well, mm. um, you know... English like to think that people don't have handguns in England, but actually that's not true because the criminals will always get them. I recommend reading the uh, Examiner, which is the Huddersfield local uh, newspaper, and they have a shooting just about every night. It's like a war zone over there, but it's a lot to do with drugs, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's funny. It's a shame. We do get there might There might be guns here, but there's, we, how often do we hear of any shootings here? I don't think I've well, ever heard right shooting for a long time. Yeah. We do, I mean... We, we have a lot of knife crime, though, in London, I it, know. Yeah, We have definitely. a lot of knife crime. We do, I mean, we do have guns in... Um, I mean, in Worthing, there will be people tooled up and all that sort of stuff. It just doesn't seem to proliferate too much into the news um, or into, into the local news. I mean, I, I, I had a chap who worked on my um, roof some years ago, oh, many years ago, when we had a bit of a roof problem. And we got powly with this bloke, and he came back and was doing some odd jobs, a bit of this and a bit of that around the house. We would pay him to do a few things I couldn't do. And in getting to know him, I discovered that he was not a hitman as such, but he was one of those people that if you wanted somebody else roughed up a bit, he would go and do it. And then when I when he told these unashamedly these stories to me, I realised just how um, narrow my life experience has actually yeah. been. Yeah, <laughs> usually men like that don't brag about their um, avocations, but um, 
who knows, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's there are a couple of tough Irish gangs down in South Philadelphia that do that for fun. You don't even have to pay them. They just, you know, do it for fun. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it is a different world in places. Um, people really don't expose their guns around my neighborhood, but... I mean, y'all go down to Texas, honey, and y'all got had a pickup truck, and y'all got your rifles in the back, exposed, you know. Hmm. But uh. So you, so people around your neck of the woods, it's sort of an unwritten rule that they're most likely going to be carrying something. You just don't talk about it and you don't show it. It's just that you. Yes. It's, it's it's security. It's considered very vulgar. It's like talking about how much money you make. It's very vulgar in certain circles. So right. we just keep yeah. it on the lo- down low. Yeah. But it's mm-hmm. an understanding that you, you know, so that in that way, if somebody does come and, you know, um, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, it stick, cost me. Yeah, it costs yeah. you. The chances are they're going to have something. Yes. So. Yes, uh, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. The, the burglars um, actually have guns, too. Believe it or not. Yeah. They're not registered. They don't have any licenses, but they no, have no. them. I yeah. mean, it's a, it's a high crime city. There's no doubt about it. Um, How bizarre. So. Yeah. And we yeah. still have police. You know, if we need to get to policemen with a gun, there's a whole sort of. There's a whole. Um, you know, signs and things have got to be uh, stamped and rubber stamped. And <laughs> oh, such of course, a, yeah. You over here. the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, there's all the paperwork and all of that. It's, it's like, um, meanwhile, you know, <laughs> someone with an Uzi has done all those things and the poor old English one is there with his truncheon and if we're lucky, he might have a, one of these electric stun things. But, yeah, uh, um, they're, they're not easy to um, use, but, you know, it is a different culture. Um but um, but there it is. Um, it's amazing. You know, we've, it is amazing. Um, how do we get um, onto guns? How do we get uh, on this I... topic of me mur- murdering people? Well, I'm, we never well, accused... needs target practice. We never actually got to the background of wh- when it, it was you murdered anybody, but we <laughs> just that being. being... Well, I forgot. I'm that's supposed to be on the download too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're in the you're in the nice part of town. You don't have cockroaches. You couldn't possibly murder anybody. No, no, um, no. I, uh, it's kind of desolate. I mean, uh, there it's a private road, and there are only about eight large uh, properties on on the road. So people are rather isolated. Um, my closest neighbor is I don't know, maybe two hundred feet away at least. Two hundred, at least two hundred feet away. I don't. I never measured it. I mean, I. I hardly see her if she walks outside not, not it's not a big treat but in any event so um yeah for somebody living alone it can be um yes. it can be a little um you know yeah. skeevy at times yeah. yeah i mean i get a lot of trespassers um which are dispatched very quickly <laughs> um, <laughs> wedding. that's yeah do you do, you do a lot of well, yeah, i know you've got a large property so um do you do a lot of digging at night? You haven't got a tiger as well, do you? After you've, after you've dispatched, is the, is the the spade comes out, does it? Hard on the back, no. You have to have a servant do that. I don't do the digging. Um, but, you know, I've had people just walk up one my, one of my fields and just start shooting a deer and stuff like that. And, oh, uh, my you know, God. It's like, oh, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, it's another yeah, world. Um, and they t- you know what they tell me? Oh, it's deer hunting season. Oh, is it? Oh, well, maybe it's trespasser hunting season, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I don't care what season it is. Get off my damn property. Bang. Yeah. It's all right. Gosh. So, uh, yeah, it's different a, world. It but... is a different world. We must seem so tame to you. Yes and no. Um, you know, it, the, here we are, are in our little, there... funny little English ways, which must seem so tame and and peculiar. <laughs> No, not really. Um, I've, my parents, relatives in England, uh, I've been to England probably 40 times at least. Um, spend about a month a year there usually. My parents were big Anglophiles. Um, they went over there a lot. Um, I probably was raised more like a, an English child than, you know, in, in the average English child nowadays. So, yeah, it was kind of a funny upbringing. Um, wow. A lot of words that my mother uh, spoke were said with um, 
an English emphasis on them as opposed to an American pronunciation. Right. But, yeah. Oh, how interesting. It was a little different. Well, we, we've run we've run out of time. It's a shame because uh, yes, and I have to go. I have to get off because my bloke just got back. And if he finds out I was talking about him, I'll be in a hot pickle. Oh, you don't want to be in a hot pickle. It's been there's lo- a bloke we'd like to see. Yeah. <sighs> Handsome too, just the way I like them. Good there you looking. go, a little baby faced chap. You should see him with an Uzi though. <laughs> All right, we'll be talking to you. T- bye, take, folks. Take bye, bye. Lovely to chat to you. Bye, Barbara. But there we go, the lovely Barbara Charles, just going off to dispatch another trespass. <laughs> I love that. Uh, meanwhile, thank you for all the comments. I have been reading them as you go, but we couldn't read them out um, at the same time. Uh, most people don't wear bulletproof vests except the police, security or criminals. Yes, that's true. Um, how is uh, how is Joseph? He's good. He's um, so close to walking. It's unbelievable. He's crawling around a lot now, you told me the other day. Yes, yes, he's getting faster and faster. You can't, you can't put him down and blink because you won't know where he's gone. <laughs> well, he we... gets up on his feet as often as he can, don't you, Baba? But he's on them now, on my lap, aren't you? Oh, bless his little socks. Well, listen, we we have run out of time, and we've got two videos uh, that we haven't played, so we'll we'll have to push them over to tomorrow. I do apologise, Barry and Faden. Um, Sorry, Barry and Faden. We'll make them the first, of course. We've got Robert Croser and. Um, I can't remember what the other one was now. It's not on the screen here. Um, But anyway, so nice. I don't have nightmares, ladies and gentlemen. We we didn't intend to talk about cockroaches and guns, but smiley babies can... um, I was listening to Woman's Hour in the car the other day um, and they were playing Baby Laughing. Can Can you make little Joseph laugh? It's time... To eat the baby! <laughs> Begin smiles, but no laughing. Where's the laughing? <laughs> no, hang on, let me try this one then. Uh, got your leggies. I got your leggies. I got your leggies. No? You're too distracted. Come on, turn on the tickles. Turn on the tickles. <laughs> Oi! Oh, you. They're not you. a performing monkey, you know. He is not a performing monkey, no. He no. reminds me all the time, don't you? Yes. Ah, oh, bless his little socks. He's so inquisitive. His eyes are everywhere, looking at everything, going, yeah, I can handle this. I could do this. I could do this game. <laughs> uh, I could do all this. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Judith for all the uh, hard work there in the, uh, in the uh, moderating room. It's very lonely in the moderating room. I do, you know, Judith goes there along with Julia every day. It's a bit like one of those hides that you sit in when you look down on a nature reserve, isn't it? You stand there and you're ready to attack. She's probably got one of Barbara Charles's dispatchers. And hello, Joseph. Hello. Blimey, they've... The effects unlike you. Yeah. Oh, look, there we are. One and the same. Uh, What are you doing tomorrow evening, Joseph? You could fill in for me. Tomorrow's Saturday. Are you you taking this weekend off as well? No, I don't think so. It was just a one-off weekend, wasn't it? It was just a break after the six weeks of of hard toil. Now, the intention is to carry on in the evenings. Um, the examiner is not real news. Oh, I don't know what that's about. Anyway, listen, we've got to go. Thank you so much uh, to uh, Judith and to Julia for being on the show and for all of you lot for coming along and, and, and for our new presenter there who looks like me. We're both um, cybermen now. So uh, there we are, and Joseph is stealing the show. Fantastic. <laughs> well, changes the subject. Sorry, dropped them. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> ta ta for now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julia. Thanks for all the callers and thanks for the uh, videos. Take care, one and all, and we'll uh, see you again. Well, I'll see you again tomorrow night at eight. Uh, in the meantime, there'll probably be some readings and stuff to do. Uh, But that's it. Thank you very much. Take care, one and all. And if I have got into the right bit, which uh, I think so, I can say goodbye and thanks for all the fish. (laughs) Bye-bye.
Well, Joseph, I suppose uh, we managed to get through that. You've been working your mum very well. You can take your hand out now. Dad, 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 dad. Da, ba, ba, ba. Yes, that's right, Joseph. Ah, oh, now he'll start laughing. 